bullets drive or shoot, sister. Right now, I reckon I'll be better at the shooting. Come on, you can do this. All right, now listen to me. I give you the word. I want you to slam it into gear, full on the gas, and drive us the hell out of here. What? I'm not sure what it is about trilogies, but it's always the third of something that manages to divide people's opinions. No better example of this is in the gaming industry. I mean, look at Mass Effect 3, Assassin's Creed 3, Saints Row 3, and Case in Point, Max Payne 3. Max Payne 3 is unique for a few reasons, mostly because it's the first major game in the series to not be developed by Remedy Entertainment. Instead, it's developed by Rockstar Games, the creators of the Grand Theft Auto series and it runs in their proprietary Rage engine. It was developed for PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and most importantly, Microsoft Windows. Its other key point of difference is that it breaks away from the film noir, you know, rain or snow-soaked streets of New York with an entirely new setting and theme. Taking place in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it portrays an older, albeit still cynical, Max in a world that is alien to him. He doesn't speak the language, he's not used to the heat, and he's generally just out of his element. In a way, it makes him seem more vulnerable, though he quickly adapts to his surroundings by shaving his head and getting on the wagon after shit hits the fan one time too many. After leaving the US to escape the vengeance of a mafia boss, he ends up working security for the wealthy Bronco family in Brazil alongside an old friend named Passos. Despite Max frequently screwing up, the Bronco family decide to keep him on, even after his screw-ups lead to multiple kidnappings and fatalities. None of the main cast are all that particularly likeable, with it being very hard to relate to the Broncos, most of whom act like spoilt brats. It seems Rockstar never seemed to be able to write believable characters. The writing generally involves eccentric, over-the-top personalities with a penchant for substance abuse. For the first time in the series, the writing also features frequent profanities, some even uttered by Max himself, and there's sort of a hazy, saturated filter that plays over most cinematics, simulating Max's long history of alcoholism. Fuck you. But again, I won't go into too much detail because like the prior games, the story is best discovered by playing through it yourself. What I will say though is that the campaign is more like an interactive movie than a game at times. These long detailed cinematics are constant and it seems you can't play for more than five minutes without having to sit through another five minutes of people talking. The vast majority of these are unskippable as well, which is fine for a first time playthrough, but severely ruins the replayability as you're gonna be forced to watch the same crap over and over. I mean, something as simple as Max, you know, watching a bunch of people from a vantage point, for instance, is good and all, but it doesn't really need to be made into a cinematic, and it just slows the pace of the game down needlessly. The main campaign focuses on this conspiracy involving kidnapping, organ smuggling, corrupt politicians, and paramilitary forces, but they don't really change him as a person. The events that lead him to having to flee the US are fleshed out quite well in a flashback, but again, this comes from him making an idiotic and almost uncharacteristic mistake, and it does feel contrived in a lot of ways. Listen, I'm sorry. Fuck you! Thankfully, the shooting in this game is fucking incredible, with just amazing physics and a real attention to detail. Like Max closing one eye to improve his aim when firing with a rifle, or the way his clothes ruffle when he rolls on the ground. It's just staggering the little things they've packed into the shooting mechanics, like when you shoot dodge for instance, if you hit a wall mid-dodge, Max will clumsily fall to the ground, interrupting the movement. You can now only hold three weapons at a time, either a two-handed weapon like a shotgun or an assault rifle, and two sidearms. If you dual wield the sidearms, Max will drop the two-handed weapon as he's got no means of holding onto it, and likewise if you equip a one-handed weapon, he'll hold the two-handed weapon in his offhand. It's just a really cool concept that has been integrated into every facet of the animations. The bullet time mechanic is also much closer to the first game now as well, with it being more about Max's reflexes than some sort of superpower. Your shoot dodge is now unlimited though, and it becomes one of the most useful skills in Max's arsenal. I mean, if you're decent at aiming, it's possible to kill two or three guys in a single shoot dodge, as long as you're aiming for the head. Rarely can you stick to just one weapon, though, and the options you're given almost changes level to level. One level you might get your hands on a grenade launcher, and then you won't see another one for a couple of hours. It keeps the shooting diverse and breaks the tedium, as does the variety with the environments. Max Payne 3 also introduces a sort of cover mechanic, though it isn't entirely useful, as standing still and shooting makes you something of a sitting duck. Staying mobile and planning your shoot dodges for maximum effect is the best way to survive almost every single encounter. And then there's all the different environments. You've got levels set in Brazil involving an office, slums, nightclubs, strip clubs, 
Then there's a flashback in Panama, a flashback in New York, and a finale at an airport that is just hands down incredible. The Panama level is probably my favorite with a unique synth soundtrack and just some chaotic gunfights. Most of these levels feature these really cool little scripted sequences where you leap off something or get pulled or pushed in a very preset path with a bunch of bad guys to kill in a short period of time. Often when you kill the last guy in the group, you get this very gory, over-the-top death animation where you can just unload into them, ripping them to pieces with each remaining bullet. Unsurprisingly, Max Payne 3 is a much harder game than Max Payne 2. Pain pills are somewhat limited now, and gunfights can be over as quickly as they started if you don't seek out cover or neglect to aim for an enemy's head. You can also be killed instantly if you're unlucky enough to take a bullet to the noggin, giving gunfights a real sense of urgency and forcing you to keep moving, almost discouraging you from seeking cover out in the first place. When you take a lethal body shot, instead of dying, the game goes into a sort of last stand kind of moment, and you have to shoot the enemy responsible for landing the killing blow. If you manage to do this and have a spare painkiller, you can be revived and just get right back into it. Now this is a neat idea, though sometimes if that enemy is in a hard to reach place, you're basically just wasting your time. Either way though, the shooting is precise and responsive with that very trademark pixel sized crosshair making a return. I have to say I've played this game on PlayStation 3 and the PC and I found the PC version much easier due to the mouse and keyboard setup. It also looks the best visually so I would think the PC version is really the one to get. It also helps that it's incredibly well optimized. Now what I see is the only real major and truly objective issue with this game harks back to the unskippable cinematics and it's truly the kind of thing that's just unacceptable. Like I said, it really ruins the replayability of the game and some of them just drag on and on and on. How they ever thought this was okay to not let you skip cinematics is just beyond me. I mean, this is Rockstar we're talking about here. You think these guys know how to make games. I just think it's really obvious that these guys really wanted to make a movie rather than a game. And I don't think it's an exaggerated statistic to say that it's almost a 50-50 with the gameplay to the cinematics. Now that's the kind of thing that even old Hideo Kojima would think twice about. And like I said, even if it's not an important plot-related cinematic, it seems they always have to throw some kind of little sequence in here and there, from something as simple as a shot of a bunch of bad guys entering a room. How about you just let me play the game normally, and the entrance of the bad guys coming into the room could happen through the gameplay, you know, let them take me by surprise or something. A top and tail cinematic per level is fine, I don't care about that, but we don't need half a dozen in between. And Max Payne 3 ultimately has a real sort of stop and start feel to it, and it just never manages to get a good pace going. I mean, compare this to the prior two games where you'd spend 15 or 20 minutes blasting your way through a level completely uninterrupted. Aside from this though, practically every other single element is honed, polished, and really damn enjoyable. From all the music tracks that change from level to level, the shooting, the visuals, and even those brief moments of humor, it is a largely enjoyable game that tried to break away from the series' well-known film noir formula, and it does succeed at that. It's just a bit of a shame that the overall experience had to be bogged down with these frequent, unskippable cinematics, but even still, I consider it to be one of the best third-person shooting games to come along in recent years. And even on the highest difficulty setting, it will give any gamer a serious run for their money. Aside from the main campaign, there's lots of side modes, unlockables, and even a multiplayer mode to sink your teeth into. Though that's something I never bothered with due to issues with the Rockstar Social Club. But all things considered, I think this is a fitting finale to one of my favorite video game series of all time. Max gets the ending he deserves, and I can think of a few other game series that had such a generally solid standard of gameplay throughout, and that's saying a lot.